Hello, today we're going to continue working on converting decimals to fractions and fractions to decimals that are tenths and hundredths. In this first problem here, this is the most common mistake I saw from your work yesterday, and moving forward, this is probably the most difficult thing to develop a full understanding on, and I hope by the end of this video you are able to complete a problem just like this completely independently and get it correct. Now, the first thing I will always want you to take a look at is decide what your whole is. This square is my entire whole, and it is broken into a hundred equal pieces, and that's my denominator. My numerator is going to represent what is shaded in, and here I have one square shaded in, so I have just one hundredths. Now, during yesterday's work, and I will move this up to here, so we have one hundredths, and during yesterday's work, I suggested that you draw a decimal point and then you draw your tenths place and your hundredths place. Each line needs to be filled with a digit. Now, one hundredth, you hear hundredth. That means the digit in my hundredths place will be a one. But there's nothing in my tenths place. So in my tens place, I still need to represent some digit there, and we're going to write a zero because there is no value in my tens place. So the answer to this problem would be one hundredths. Now, this one hundredths is exactly the same as this one hundredths, and both of these fractions and decimals represent this picture here. Many of you wrote this. Now, those of you who wrote this, you're telling me that you have a digit, the digit one is in my tenths place. So the value of that is just one tenth. But one tenth, if I was to look at this picture, would mean that I shaded in One hundredth, two hundredths, three hundredths, four hundredths, five hundredths, six hundredths, seven hundredths, eight hundredths, nine hundredths, ten hundredths. And ten hundredths is the same as one tenth. But notice this is a much different value than what was originally given to us as one hundredth. One hundredth and one tenth are not the same. And we're showing that one tenth in this picture is the same as ten hundredths. Which notice these values are not the same. You need to be very, very careful when you are representing these numbers and making sure your digits and your representations are going in the correct spots. Now, today, Looking at this problem, this example above is nine tenths. Let's look at how we'd write that as a decimal. So notice here, I already drew the lines for you, tens, ones, my decimal point. I have my tenths and my hundredths. When you hear nine tenths, that's telling you the value of the digit in my tenths place is nine tenths. Therefore, that digit in my tenths place will be a nine, giving me nine tenths. This nine tenths is exactly the same as this nine tenths. For this one here, we do the same thing for the problem above, only make sure we're in the hundredths place because we have 63 hundredths. And notice again, I already drew my lines for my ones, my decimal point, my tenths, and my hundredths. I recommend you do that on a scrap piece of paper for all of these problems today. So now we have 63 hundredths representing 63 hundredths here as my decimal. Now I can also tear that apart and show that I have six tenths plus three hundredths. Now, the other day we learned how to add and subtract tenths and hundredths. And I know that six tenths is exactly the same as sixty hundredths. And if I was to add this together, it's going to bring me back to sixty three hundredths 
which is also exactly the same fraction I have above and the same representation as my decimal above as well. Now looking at this first problem here, we have four tenths. Now I like to draw my decimal point and again drawing my lines. Okay, in my ones place I don't have a whole number here, so that's just simply going to be a zero. In my tenths place it's saying four tenths, so that means the value in my tenths place is going to be a four. So all I have here is four tenths tenths. Notice this is fraction form, this is decimal form. For this next problem I have 49 hundredths. I hear hundredths which means I will have two decimals after two digits after my decimal points giving me 49 hundredths and 49 hundredths. And again if you were to tear this 49 hundredths apart the value of the digit in my tenths place is four tenths. And the value of the digit in my hundredths place is nine hundredths. And again, if I was to add this together, four tenths is equivalent to forty hundredths. Now they have the same denominator, so I can add my numerators, giving me forty nine as my numerator and 100 as my denominator. Notice these are all exactly the same. This is how we come up with our fraction that is equivalent to this as a decimal. My next one, I have seven hundredths, and I also gave you six tenths on the same paper, so you could see the difference between the two, so you do not make the same mistakes we talked about earlier in this video. Seven hundredths, I hear hundredths, I see hundredths as my denominator, which is telling me that the value of the digit in my hundredths place is going to be seven hundredths. Therefore, the digit in my hundredths place will be a seven. But just like we talked about earlier in this video, you have nothing in your tenths place. So it's important that you're including that zero. While this problem we have six tenths. So notice I'm hearing tenths, which means I'm only going to have one digit after my decimal point. And six tenths is telling me that the value of the digit in my tenths place is six tenths. Therefore, the digit in my tenths place is going to just be a six. Notice this is six tenths in decimal form or decimal notation, and this is six tenths in fraction. This six tenths is equivalent to this six tenths. Every decimal can be represented as a fraction, and every fraction can be represented as a decimal. Now, I hope you review this video and feel free to rewatch this on my YouTube channel if you need additional help during today's assignment.